Hey everyone, today I would like to discuss with you the functions of the drivetrain, its purpose, and the many parts, including in the drivetrain group. The drivetrain what is what makes the uh, vehicle or a rig, uh, rig's movement on the road, uh, moving forward or moving backward. This is because of the drivetrain, which includes the engine assembly, which is the source, of course, the source of power. The clutch group, this is located between the engine assembly and the transmission assembly. And you get a propeller shaft, which is having a universal joint between ends of the propeller shaft or the drive shaft. And then you have uh, rear axles or differential gears. Um, some tractors, some trucks are having a single uh, drive axles, but other uh, trucks, which is heavy duty tractors, uh, pulling um, long, longer or uh, heavy duty uh, trailer are having a tandem axle or tandem differential. So the drivetrain takes the power generated by the engine so and applies it into the tractor's rear wheels, okay? So as the wheels turn, the rig moves. The drivetrain has five main parts. The clutch group, the clutch assembly, the transmission assembly, the drive shaft, universal joints, and differential. The clutch is what uh, makes, connects, and disconnects the, uh, the transmission of the power generated by the engine via the clutch uh, and the transmission and the drive shaft or the propeller shaft to the uh, differential gears and the wheels. And they perform four basic functions. Um, it connects the engine, which is the power source of power to and disconnect it from the drive train. And modify the torque. The torque is the twisting motion of the, uh, the engine which being transmitted by the transmission through the uh, shaft and the differential gear. And modify the torque and engine speed. Uh, the speed is me measured by RPM or revolution per minute produced by the engine to let the vehicle operate at its best. Another function is to carry the power of the engine to the rear axle and the drive wheels. Change direction of the torque or twist to propel the rear wheels. So the simple explanation that I'm gonna show you what happens when you put various parts of the powertrain into action with your pedals and levers, okay? You got the engine assembly. Uh, I'm just giving you the, the uh, main components of the drivetrain, uh, the source of the power from the engine assembly and the power will be transmitted by the transmission gear or what other countries calling gearbox, okay? via the clutch and then the drive shaft or the propeller shaft okay with where which are having the uh, universal joint at its end of the drive shaft and you got the differential gear and axle assembly you got the pinion gear and the drive gear and the ring gear inside the differential housing assembly which are also having the two uh, axle shaft uh, the, the left wheel axle shaft and the right wheel axle shaft. So, as I said, carry power of the engine to the rear axle and drive the wheels and change the direction of the torque or twist to propel the rear wheels, okay? So it is simply 
this is simply an overview of the dry train. I'm not going to go into more detail, like go into uh, details of the transmission assembly, go into details of the the uh, differential gear or the clutch group. I'm just what what I'm going to do is I'm going to explain to you the uh, the basic or the fundamentals of the drive train uh, drive train uh, group which in, are including this uh, very important components of the drive train so let me talk about the clutch okay the clutch is very important in the engagement or de engaging the uh, the uh, transmission from the engine which is the power source of power uh, very important engaging and disengaging okay so the as the driver uses it the clutch connects or disconnects the engine from the rest of the power train or the drive train so on most trucks this is done by three plates the plates can be engaged can be engaged together okay the two plates the clutch clutch pressure plate and the clutch disc can be engaged together or disengage apart can be disengaged apart so that the the uh, the the, uh, the driver is cutting off the the engagement of the from the engine to the transmission via the uh, propeller shaft and the differential gear So normally the uh, clutch group, which, which is the uh, clutch pressure blade and the disc are usually installed at the rear of the engine, especially those uh, heavy duty trucks and heavy duty vehicles are usually mounted on the engine in the rear, at the rear of the engine. And it's being housed by the bell housing of the transmission or the class group housing assembly. And this is uh, bolted uh, attached to the uh, flywheel of the engine, which I'm going to uh, discuss to you more in details later. So these are the three important parts of the uh, class group. You got the pressure plate, which is, uh, which is equipped with the uh, tension spring, this one, Sometimes they call it the lift spring or tension spring. And the other side of the pressure plate, the opposite side is having the smooth uh, face like this one, because this is where the uh, class this sits engaged or disengaged. Okay. The class this is having this, uh, li the lining, just like the, uh, you know, brake, brake pads or brake shoes. The lining is for the purpose of friction, so that when when the clutch this is engages with the with the pressure plate and being pushed against the flywheel of the engine, the the power of the engine will transmit via this clutch by uh, and into the transmission, the propeller shaft and the differential gear. So. What makes the clutch pressure plate clutch this engages into the flywheel? It is the release bearing. The release bearing where presses, uh, release bearing presses this uh, tension spring, and then it uh, disengages the clutch this, uh, you know, clutching the 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 surface of this uh, clutch pressure plate and disengages from the flywheel of the engine assembly. So when, you re when the driver releases the release bearing, the tension spring will push and engages the class disc, both the class disc and pressure plate face here against the, uh, the face of the flywheel of the engine assembly. So that is the purpose of that uh, class uh, this That's why the three three uh, parts of the clutch group are very important. Uh, the pressure plate, the clutch disc, and the release, release bearing. So a strong forces the two driving members toward each other 
This squeezes them against the metal blade until they all turn together as one unit. And they are together. The class is engaged. When they are apart, the class are disengaged. Simple as that. So the agent flywheel is the first driving member. This flywheel is attached to the end of the, of the engine assembly. If you can see this hole, this hole are being bolted into the end of the crankshaft of the engine. So this class, this will press, be pressed against this uh, face of the flywheel. The clutch is being pressed by the clutch pressure blade and engages. So it's like this, the clutch, this is like a sandwich. It's like a hamburger. Uh, the clutch pressure plate is the buns and the plywheel. So they are being, the clutch, this is being uh, pressed together by the plate and the flywheel. That happens because of the release bearing. So this is the uh, clutch group arrangement. If you can see it, this is the clutch group arrangement. So the engine flywheel is the first driving member. Its surface is very smooth where it squeezes the, dri the driven plate. The driven plate is the disc, the class disc. If you can see, there is a spline here and the main drive of the transmission will be inserted into this spline. So when the disc is turning, the main drive of the transmission will also be turning. The other member, driving member is called the pressure plate. It is a fairly heavy cast iron disc that is smooth on one side. It is fastened to the cover, which is bolted to the flywheel so they all turn together. The disc can slide toward and away from the driven plate. So the driven plate or clutch disc is a plus disc or steel with a friction facing on each side. The plate is fastened by splines, the grooves or slots to a shaft connected to the transmission. The disc fits into the grooves on the shaft so that the plate and shaft turn together. The plate can slide backward and forward on the shaft. The class disc is softer than the other plates. Thus, it will be destroyed before damage can occur to the other parts of the drive train. When a clutch goes out, it is usually this part that is worn out and must be replaced. So if the if the uh, clutch pressure plate is also damaged, scored, you can also replace it. But just but usually the clutch disc is the one that is easily damaged and can be replaced. But if the but if if the mechanic hears the noise coming out from the uh, Clutch release bearing, that's because the, the bearing has dried up inside, uh, loses the, the uh, grease that is maintained inside the clutch bearing. Then the release bearing can also be replaced just like the clutch disc and the clutch pressure plate. So the driven plate or clutch disc is a flat disc or steel facing on each side, okay? The class disc is softer than the other plates, okay? Because of the uh, soft lining that is being used for the friction purpose between the surface of the uh, flywheel and the face of the class pressure plate. So to prevent damage or excessive wear, clutches can be adjusted and they have an access hole to permit this adjustment. A series of coil springs or sometimes one large flat spring act between the clutch cover and the pressure plate. They push or pull the pressure plate toward the flywheel. That is the engaged engagement and the disengagement. This action squeezes the clutch disc between the cover and the plate. So the springs exert a constant force flying trying to engage the clutch. Usually they are strong enough to keep the clutch from slipping. So to disengage the clutch, the driver pushes down on the pedal 
the pedal causes levers to pull or push the pressure plate against the springs. This loosens and finally separates the driving plates from the driven plate. So the class disengages and disconnects the engine from the rest of the powertrain. So this is the class group in the bell housing. This is the bell housing that I was talking about, which is mounted on the front end of the transmission. Then you got the class pressure blade and you got the pressure, the class disc and the smooth face of the flywheel, which is attached to the engine assembly. So the same uh, configuration of the class group and the components uh, uh, between the engine and the transmission assembly and being covered by the bell housing of the transmission. In the case of the manual, you need manual transmission, then you need a, a clutch group, the clutch pressure plate, the clutch disc and the release bearing. But in the case of the automatic transmission where you have an and an automatic transmission, you need a torque converter in lieu of the uh, of the clutch group. There are four important parts or component of a torque converter. You got the impeller, which is the pump. It pumps the ATF, the automatic transmission fluid, and you get a stator uh, reversing the the uh, the flow of the hydraulic fluid or the ATF, and you get a turbine which is being uh, uh, driven by the hydraulic pressure and you get the clutch assembly, okay? And being housed by two housing between two ends housing. And the transmi and the engine is, uh, and this uh, rather the, uh, the uh, torque converter is, you know, driven by the engine assembly, by, by its crankshaft or by the flywheel, because this is attached to the flywheel. A different kind of flywheel is being used uh, by, the, uh, by the engine. It does not have the smooth face that you usually see in a manual transmission, okay? And the, the, this one is attached or bolted to the uh, flywheel of the engine. And the other end, which is having the, the impeller, is driven by the main drive of the automatic transmission assembly. So it then turns the impeller and pumps the hydraulic fluid inside this uh, housing, okay? The both housing are actually welded together. So you cannot, you know, some, some mechanics are trying to open it to fix what's inside, but usually some companies are, uh, just replacing the entire the assembly, the torque converter assembly, and they don't ha uh, they do not attempt to cut the welded portion which is on the uh, side, on the circumference of the of the uh, housing assembly of the torque converter. So when the it it turns the impeller and drives the hydraulic and then engages the clutches because of the turbine and turns the the uh, the main drive of the transmission uh, automatically by hydraulic uh, fuel hydraulic fluid system, okay. And this is only for big uh, L, which are having a, a, an automatic transmission, okay, like pickup trucks or passenger cars, okay. Now let's talk about the transmission. The transmission is called by uh, North America as transmission. But in some countries in Europe, they're calling it gearboxes, gearbox. The transmission is a case or box of gears located behind the clutch. So the case is usually fastened to the clutch housing uh, by, the, uh, by this one, the bell housing. This is the bell housing. This is bolted to the rear end of the engine block, okay? 
So this is the main drive of the transmission, you know, which is being driven by the, the disc, clutch disc, because of this spline. The spline, this is, this one will be inserted into the spline of the clutch disc. Thus, when the, when the, the pressure plate, the flywheel, the pressure plate and clutch disc is turning, this is all engaged. This uh, drive will also turn, thereby uh, turning whatever gears are inside of this gearbox or the transmission. So the clutch and the transmission look like an extension of an engine, it being mounted together. So the transmission adjusts the power generated by the engine, so it provides the right speed and torque for the job. What's important is the torque. Okay, especially when it is slow moving or in an uphill drive, you need torque coming from the engine. For example, when a loaded rig moves from a stop position, a great deal of power is needed to drive the drivetrain so that the vehicle will move forward or move backward. The driver adjusts the gears in the transmission to provide the needed combination of power, torque, and speed. So the transmission then sends or transmits the power from each source, which is the engine, okay, to the drive or powered axles. This is the power that the propels the vehicles, propels the propeller shaft, the uh, uh, differential gear, and the axles. The gears in the transmission help control the speed and power of the vehicle. The engine can be kept at a relatively constant speed. The rig, however, can be moved either slowly or rapidly with much the same power output. Once underway, the vehicle needs less power to keep it going than it needed to start it rolling. Gear makes all this possible because there are small gears, medium-sized gears, and large gears. You know, the large gears are the one that is called uh, uh, the first shift, uh, first gear, and the one, the next one would be the second gear, the third gear, and the fourth gear, so on and so forth. So the biggest number, the smallest the, the gear will become, okay, or the bigger or the size will become, and the number of gear fit will become. The gears in the transmission help control the speed and power of the vehicle. The engine can be kept at a relatively constant speed. The rig, however, can be moved either slowly or rapidly with much the same power output. Once underway, the vehicle needs less power to keep it going than it needed to start it rolling. Gears make all this possible. So you need to understand two basic related facts when selecting gears. More torque or power means less speed, okay? Especially when it's climbing hill, uphill, on uphill. You need more torque, you need more power, but the speed, of course, is much lesser. And the second uh, function would be uh, more speed means less torque. When, when the vehicle is in a level uh, position or even downhill position, downhill uh, mov uh, movement or downhill operation, the power is transmitted, the transmission is less, but the speed is more or the speed is faster. So in other words, as the gears increase torque, they decrease speed at about the same rate. This means the driver can change the ratio between the engine and drive wheels to get either more speed or more torque. The lower the gear, the more torque. The higher the gear, the more speed. So there are different types of transmission. There are many types of transmission. They may have different number of forward speeds, one or more shift gears, you know, uh, you know, a gear, a, a transmission could have a four gears, a five gears, six gears, 12 gears, you know, or even more. You can, it can, it can also have like uh, 
high and low, like uh, some tractors having a high and low speed, four gears for the high, uh, four, four speed for the high gear, low gear for speed. And there's, an, uh, there's, there's a third one, which is what they call overdrive, four gears also, which means they have 12 gears all in all. So it could be a single or multiple gear housings, single or dual drive axles, different types of gear selector switches, manual or power assisted or auxiliary units, different combinations of main transmission and variable speed rear ends. So I'm not gonna go into detail about the many possible combinations and why they are needed. However, new drivers should be aware that the operating the transmission correctly is an important part of learning to drive a tractor and trailer. Not nowadays, it is more easier to, to, to shift the gear, unlike in the old days in the 1970s and 1980s, where difficult to drive. I remember the Kenworth, when you shift the gear, uh, Going up, you should, you know, you should uh, see the tachometer. Tachometer should be around 1500 RPM. Should read about 1500 RPM. When the, when the, uh, when the uh, driver wants to downshift the, the gears, the, the uh, RPM should be around 1800 RPM more or less. And the driver is also double clutching the, the clutch, you know, pressing the clutch twice before the gear can be engaged in the transmission. That's why it's very difficult. You need a lot of skills in the old days, you know, in the old school. You need a lot of skills, the old school drivers to drive like Kenworth, like uh, some other, like white trucks, no old uh, model uh, tractors in the 70s and the 80s, okay? Now let's talk about the uh, drive shaft or the propeller and the universal joints. Behind the transmission is propeller called the drive shaft or the propellers. Uh, it has uh, two uh, universal joints in the, at each end of the propeller shaft. So the drive shaft is the steel shaft that runs from the transmission to the rear of the vehicle. Usually the, the, the shaft is hollow. It's not solid, it's hollow. So on trucks with a long wheel base, carrier bearings join drive shafts. It is in a metal casting mounted and a cross member between the drive shafts. At each end, the front and the rear end of the shafts are the universal joints, okay? Uh, which is this one, the universal joint on the rear and universal joint on the front end. This is for flexibility when you when the, when the uh, vehicles on driving in a, on bumps or turning the vehicles, or movement of the transmission and the engine while the vehicle is being bumps. So very important the drive shaft this flexibility is important. So as I said, the, the front end and rear of the shaft are universal joints. So they called universal joints because they can be moved in almost any direction. They usually made of two U-shaped pieces set at right angles to one another and fastened together by cross arms of equal length. As the drive shaft spins, it transfers or carries the twisting motion back to the rear axle. So you need torquing, torquing motion or the twisting motion. So you need more torque, you need more power to drive the uh, differential assembly and the drive shaft or the axle assembly. So the dual joints let the drive shaft change its angle of position, different position. So the U-shaped pieces yoke, this one is like the yoke 
this is another yoke and they're being put together there's a cross joint uh, here inside um, this is joined by the cross joint there's bearing between ends one two and one here and one at the bottom so there are uh, four uh, bearings needle bearings okay of uh, attached to the uh, cross joint okay sometimes they call it cross joint since there are two pivots the shaft can be at an angle and still transmit power so the u joints do not have to be a straight in a straight line this is very important because they become somewhat misaligned with its bump in the road so especially if the road is a rough road or you're driving the vehicle on an off-road or unpaved road there's no pavement on the road or hard soil or rough road okay so rough terrain very important for the joints to work on on different angles so the rear axle moves up and down with the wheels at every bump while the transmission does not move as much so the U joints let the propeller shaft turn even though its ends are shifting in different one in relation to one another. Okay. Now let's talk about differential assembly. This is the uh, the last portion or the rear portion of the drivetrain, which drive the two wheels at the rear, having the two axles, one in the right and one axle shaft on the left and three gears here inside the differential housing assembly so the differential transfer driving power to the wheels through the drive axle shafts at the rear end of the propeller shaft is a short shaft with a small gear at the end this gear is called the prime the pinion gear the pinion gear uh, meshes with the uh, the ring gear so this is the pinion gear and the, this is the ring gear and the side gear okay pinion gear ring gear side gear the two most important component inside the differential housing and also adding to that is the two drive axle this one which is connected to the two wheels okay which drives the wheel the two wheels okay the pinion gear meshes with the ring gear in the differential box on the rear axle. The pinion and ring gears have two jobs. Number one, they turn the force or torque of the pinion shaft at right angles so the wheels can turn and drive the vehicle. They can reduce speed and increase torque between because the pinion gear is much smaller than the ring gear. So as you know, the pinion gear sends the power to the ring gear in the differential gearbox. The rear wheels of the vehicle must be able to turn at different speeds when turning a corner. The wheels that are farther from the corner travel a greater distance, so they must be able to turn faster. This turning of the wheels at different speed is made possible by the differential. The differential is a group gears that connect the left and rear, uh, rear axles. It divides the driving force equally between the axles and permits one axle to turn faster than the other. This is a complex gear arrangement and a, drive does not, and a driver does not need to understand how it works, but just that it does work. This is a typical example of a pickup truck having a four wheel drive. The drivetrain typically is the same as the one that you're having a two wheel drive pickup truck. Okay, you have the engine assembly, you got the transmission in between them, the class, and then you have the rear wheels, the rear axle, or the rear propeller shaft the differential gear, the drive axle, and the wheels, okay? But when it comes to four-wheel drive, the difference is that you're having a differential in front 
portion of the truck, the front drive axle, the differential, oh, basically the same as the rear drive, as the front drive. And the additional component that you're gonna have in the four wheel drive pickup truck is the transfer case. The transfer case is being driven by the transmission assembly and the transfer case is the one, you know, dri dri driving the, uh, or turning the, uh, the drive shaft or the propeller shaft, as well as the front propeller shaft and the uh, differential. So the rear uh, differential drives the rear wheel, the front differential drives the front wheel. So very important they're gonna have a transfer case when it comes to four wheel drive, because unlike the four, the two wheel drive, you only have the real wheel drive, but the four wheel drive, you're gonna have the real wheel drive and the front wheel drive. But when it comes to passenger cars, you only have the, the uh, front wheel drive, which is being driven by the trans axle, either whether it's a, trans, it's a manual or a, an automatic trans axle is driven only the front wheel. That is for the wheel, four wheel drive, drive train group of components. Now, I'm also going to discuss with you the Hatskis drive. What is the Hatskis drive? Hatskis drive actually originated from France. It's, it's, it's a French automotive, automobile manufacturer's name. They call it Hatskis. So this is uh, originated by French guys uh you know um design this uh the system of the drive train uh what is Haskis drive this is a drive shaft drive form of power of transmission the spring takes torque reaction braking reaction and driving thrust side thrust and weight of the body because of these components you got the absorber you get the coil spring between two sides and you got the stabilizer uh, arm. You, uh, you got the lower control arm and on the right side and lower control arm on the upper side. And you also have a upper control arm. These, all these components work together to have the braking reaction, the driving thrust, the side thrust and weight of the body so that the still the drivetrain will be efficient uh, whether you're driving on road or you're driving off road or rough terrain situation driving. So that's it for today. I hope you like this presentation. If you do like it, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so that you'll be notified of the next upload. And thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this presentation.